Hello, welcome back to my tech one. I have another product from the Athens Tech Maker series, and this is the R1 Pro, the rotary unit. And uh, with this, we can replace the Y axis movement if we want to engrave some cylindrical objects. I already tested the previous version, I really like that design because there is nothing in the way of those cylinders and I can engrave a much uh, longer object. Uh, here I can see that the stepping motor is in, is in the way, but uh, here we can use some kind of support, so I will test with some longer objects too. And also I think uh, I have included here the chuck unit too. Let's see what's in the box and do some test engravings. Pay attention, some parts are a little bit hidden in this box. For example, two leg extenders are below the first two. This is content of the package, so these are two main units and uh, each has its separate uh, user manual. These are some jaws for this chuck, tools for assembling, and then we have uh, two types of the cables. White is for the Atom stack and the black is from, uh, for some different engraver because it has a little bit different pinout of the cables. And these are some supports for spheres and maybe for cylindrical objects. Then we have a plastic uh, vernier caliper, measuring tape, uh, spirit level, and these are leg extenders to lift the laser module a little bit higher, so we have enough space for these units. First I'm lifting the laser module, so I have enough space below it for these two new units. Then I'm connecting the provided cable, the white version for this uh, Atom Stack engraver. And the second part will be replacing the Y-axis stepper motor. So now the signal is sent to this uh, unit, not to the Y-axis stepper motor. Setting the focus here. In user manual there are a lot of instructions how can we use this with the light burn and it's good but there are no instructions how can we use it with the laser GLBL. So uh, I will explain on my examples because uh, you will understand the basics too and what is important to understand that everything in design what is along the y-axis will be actually on this cylinder and all the math you need to know is that the perimeter is equal diameter multiply number p and if the design is correct because sometimes I saw that it is not uh, in that case, the moving point on this cylinder is equal to the length of the y-axis pad and we don't need any other uh, modifications. In case that it is not correct, we have to add one another multiplier, but that's a constant number and it is always the same for this uh, unit. Uh, it is different for the chuck because it depends on the diameter too, because the chuck always rotates with the same speed, but uh, that's a different story. This cylinder approximately has a diameter of 81 mm and I want to place some graphics which will fill the half of the object. In this case 81 multiplied p divided by 2 is 127 mm along the y-axis. Interesting when I press the up button I can see the laser spot moves down so I have to rotate this module. I don't know, more reasonable would be if this would be on the other side. Up down and now it's moving in the correct direction. Boundary check. And I can see it is not really cylindrical but it will do it fine. The engraving is finished, it could be a little bit stronger but now the dimensions are more important and as you can see as planned it takes half of this cylinder. And now let's engrave some smaller cylinder, but it is too small cur for current distance of these uh, rollers. So I move them closer. The measure is okay, now placing a tension on the timing belt by moving the stepper motor. Setting the focus. But it is too low, I cannot set it, so I have to lift a little bit higher this uh, rotary unit. And now I can set the focus too. And now do doing the engraving. And exactly as planned, this atom stack world was designed to be completely around this object, so diameter multiply pi. And now let's engrave something smaller, this is 6mm in diameter, so I have to move these uh, rollers completely close to each other. And now I will engrave something which is bigger than the perimeter of the cylindrical object. The text will be some kind of spiller around the stick. Thank you for watching. And it's up to your imagination, what can you do with these possibilities? And now the rotary chuck. Great that we can tilt it to engrave some, I don't know, cone objects or similar. For the feeling very heavy and good quality product. I'm moving the cable from the rollers to the chuck stepper motor. And having a separate stepper motor makes the assembling easier. Because I tested some similar objects where we have to use the same stepper motor for all units. Which makes the assembling more complicated. 
And now the only part which I didn't like, the support rollers. This definitely needs some kind of redesign where we don't need a tool to set it, they could use some kind of knobs for this. And setting the distance between the roller is not smooth so this needs a better solution. Even the maximal height is not enough for this chuck so I have to use some distancers below it. As you can see this is the closest I can go to the chuck because I don't really like this kind of modules, uh, I better like where the shield is removable. In that case I could go even closer to the chuck. Hey, it's Igor from the future who is always smarter. The chuck has to be mounted in this direction otherwise you will get a mirrored image. The rotary chuck is mounted but we have to discuss few things because it operates a little bit different from those rotary rollers. Until with the rollers, uh, the perimeter speed of the cylinder was equal like with the y-axis movement. So all we have to know is diameter multiplied pi if you want to engrave the whole uh, perimeter. But here that's not the case because the chuck rotates always with the same rotation speed independent of the objects which it holds in the diameter. So uh, we have to do some calculation. I found in specifications that uh, it has 160 millimeters per rotation. Now, if I want to engrave something smaller, like this cylinder, which has a diameter of 28.5 millimeters, uh, the perimeter is actually approximately 90 millimeters, I have to multiply this to get that 160 millimeters in perimeter. I think it is better to explain on this uh, drawing. So this is our rotary check, which is attached with some timing belt, and for one rotation it moves 160 millimeters, so this is the perimeter. If I divide this with the pi, I will get the diameter is 50.93 millimeters. And we insert our object with the diameter of D. And let's say this is our graphics X and Y dimensions. And we have to modify the Y dimension with this number 50.93 divided by the diameter of our object. And we will get something like this. So if we engrave this rectangle, on this object we will get something like this square here. Back to our cylinder with a diameter of 28.5 millimeters and the original graphics has the length of 89 millimeters along the y-axis and this has to be modified this means 159 millimeters has to be the y-axis dimension to get the correct proportions in this case completely around the cylinder. And the calculation is good this rectangle goes completely around the object. And now let's engrave some kind of ring. I'm replacing the jaws with these uh, sticks and I'm engraving my name but uh, then I realized that it is mirrored. So I have to rotate the chuck into this position and repeating the same engraving and this time it is correct and I have my own ring. Well, this toilet paper holder is exactly 51 mm in diameter, so if I want to engrave something here, let's say a square, I don't have to do any kind of other modification, because it is equal like that uh, length on, of the chuck. So in laser GRBL the dimension of this square is 20 by 20 mm, and on engraving it has the same dimensions and proportions. Let's see one more example, I want to engrave a 5 mm square on this stick. This means in Y axis I already calculated I have to increase 8.5 times to get squared object. And on the engraving the dimensions are 5 by 5 mm. And what happens if we don't do this adjustment, so let's leave here 5 by 5 mm the dimension. As you can see the square is very deformated along the y-axis. And for the end my opinion about this product and I will start with this roller and to be honest I would like better the older version because here we have the stepper motor and timing belt in the way there I could engrave much longer object which could extend these rollers on both sides. I cannot see any advantage of this product compared to that one except it arrives with different equipment. Now about this equipment let's start with the supports this is very bad design so this definitely has to be redesigned a little bit because it is not comfortable to move them with the screws and it's a little bit tight and the height is not enough if I want to use it for example with the chuck so definitely some kind of knobs much comfortable solution has to be done and it has to be much taller and now about this rotary chuck now this design I really like so this is very good that we can adjust this angle and let's say we can engrave something which has cone on the one side and uh, it doesn't require too much assembling, but of course if you want to use these supports at the end, again, this, this is not good design. Probably I would rather print something and use that solution instead of, of this, so definitely this, this solution is not good. 
But this, yes, of course, uh, LIBOR users uh, have, are in easier position because uh, all the calculation will be done by the software. Laser JBL users, I hope I could explain you now why you have to do this calculation. You have to design rescale your graphics along the y-axis to get the correct proportions. And for this, you have to do some calculations. If you have some additional experience, you know, fill us in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.